I'm Joe Saunders with Miniature Landscape Hobbies. In this episode, we're going to talk about something that's a pretty hot topic right now with model painters. Painting Caucasian skin tones, using speed paints, and other zenithal methods. Miniature Landscape Hobbies is proudly supported by these sponsors. I don't think it's secret that the introduction of the new zenithal painting techniques has really enhanced the miniature painting hobby. In fact, I don't know of any model painters at all that haven't embraced the use of speed paints, Color Express, or Citadel contrast paints wholeheartedly. These products are just simply awesome. They make the process of preparing your models go extremely quickly. In my case, I feel they probably cut my painting time by about a third from when I build a model to when I get it on the table. Despite this, there are some things that speed paints don't do well. There's been a lot of discussion around flesh tones in particular. It seems the range of Caucasian flesh tones that are available out there for speed paints and other zenithal techniques just don't quite stack up to traditional acrylic layer painting techniques. I myself have tried quite a few options and I've been engaged in a lot of discussion online. In this episode, I'm gonna run an experiment. You see, I'm determined that the 2.0 speed paints can definitely give you great flesh tones. It's just, we don't know how to do it yet. After talking to quite a few other miniature painters, I've come up with a list of possible techniques that might actually help you get the most out of your zenithal painting flesh tones. In this episode, I'm going to try to follow up on some of these suggestions. Let's get down to work and see if we can come up with a scheme for making zenithal flesh tones look really great. Do you like free paint? Of course you would. You're a miniature painter. And now could be your lucky day because Miniature Landscape Hobbies is holding a contest. You can win a free Army Painter Most Wanted Speed Paint set. In order to enter, all you need to do is comment on a post on Miniature Landscape Hobbies pages for Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. Share your favorite hobby tip and then enter hashtag MLH to participate. Let me address a few critical details up front. First, I'm not suggesting zenithal paints are the end-all be-all of all miniature painting. They're good for quick jobs or in concert with regular acrylics. If I'm working on a character model, speed paints might play a supporting role but layer painting is still king, in my opinion. Second, I have experience with speed paints, but not with Citadel Contrast Paints and Color Express, so all of the comparisons are with Army Painter products. I imagine that your experience with these products will be similar, but your mileage may vary. Third, this experiment, and I use this term in the loosest sentence of the word, is limited by my skills and products. So the results may not be consistent. Most importantly, I'm going for fast production techniques on rank and file models here. Don't expect golden demon results because I'm not trying to do that. So here are the rules for my experiment. I'm going to take the suggestions I got in various Facebook groups and use them to take Army Painter Crusader flesh from the version 2 range and try to make the ideal Caucasian flesh paint job, which is a trade-off between speed and quality. The subjects are Warlord Miniatures Hanoverians from their 28mm Napoleonic range. The suggestions I received in my discussions centered around the base layer under the flesh. I slap chop my models. But most people, including myself, feel that the black and white underpainting is too dark for flesh tones. As a result, the main consensus was to try three different things. 
Paint Crusader flesh over straight white, paint it over flat flesh, and paint it over light flesh. These are all common tones from paint lines such as Vallejo and AK Interactive. Now here I reserve the right to follow up after the Crusader flesh with a light highlight of light flesh, as this is a constant with the techniques I always use. So, with all that aside, let the science begin. To start the process, I painted four models with the slap chop method, priming them black and working my way up to pure white with a series of dry brushes. I then went ahead and painted them all identically with version 2 speed paints. However, I left the flesh areas untouched and did not line in. Previously, I had mentioned we were using three different underpaints, but I prepared for our models, so could, I could also prepare a zenithal highlighting model. That way, I would have a control. I also kept the same model with a layered scheme nearby for reference. To keep things straight, I painted on each base to identify which underpainting color I used. Then things could really get underway. I started by applying solid coats of each underpainting color. I did white first, moved on to flat flesh, and finally light flesh. And then I waited for this to dry. After the paint was set, I went over each of these with Crusader Flesh. I tried to use the same amount and application technique for each, but it was hard to judge depending on the color. After the Crusader Flesh had dried, I got out Light Flesh and gave a quick highlight to each model, going after only the highest points. In hindsight, I should have just left the Crusader Flesh as opposed to applying the highlight. If I do this again though, I would definitely leave this step out. The models were now complete, so I lined them in and based them, which means that they were ready for the reveal. Here is the zenithal paint job. Crusader flesh just doesn't work over such a dark base. This guy looks bad. Fortunately, I play Napoleonics so he'll get sent to the back rank, never to be seen on camera again. Next up is the white model. Good, but a little pale. Someone who saw these results pointed out that the zenithal model had more white than the white model. I had to admit, I'm really not sure why this is. Perhaps I applied the Crusader flesh too thinly on the zenithal model. I just don't know. Here's the flat flesh model. I tried to keep the lighting the same for all of the reveals, but this guy is really quite orange in real life. It still works, but it's just a tiny bit off. Lastly is the light flesh underpainting. When this went on, it was virtually indistinguishable from white, but when it dried, it had more depth. So here they all are lined up. If you want my honest opinion, I would always choose the layer painted guy. But since he takes three times longer, and we're focusing on speed paints here, I gave the award to the light flesh underpainting. I have to admit though, I was pleasantly surprised with all the three underpainted models. They would all look great on the tabletop. I actually went on and finished a command group for the Hanoverians with the light flesh underpainting method. This would give me a chance to try it on more expressive models. The results exceeded my expectations. In the end then, I was satisfied that the light flesh underpainting with Crusader flesh was a good technique that I'll keep in my artistic toolbox. I wouldn't call it perfected though. A few more tweaks might be in order. For now, I've found the right speed painting method for Caucasian skin. Watch out for it in the near future to show up in more of my videos. We'll also need to visit some other skin tones and look at how the speed paints affect those. If you have any tips or tricks for flesh tones that you use, 
be sure to mention them in the comments. While you're there, remember to add hashtag MLH to your post in order to enter into the upcoming draw for the most wanted speed paint set, courtesy of our sponsor, Torchlight Games. If you would like to learn more about painting Napoleonics, watch this video. Or watch this other video instead. Thanks for watching, and as always, remember to keep building life in miniature.